I want to start this soap tutorial by telling those who were unfortunate to match through the regular match cycle to not give up. I want to tell you that there is always hope, there is always a chance if you work hard and show improvement in your application. And now let's dive into it. So I'm gonna go to the source information and explain the complicated and somewhat confusing SOAP process. So I'm currently on the NRMP website, uh, which is uh, the organization that runs the match. If you go on their website and look at the calendar, and I'm gonna explain to you the SOAP cycles through the calendar from the NRMP website. So for match 2024, which started in September of 2023 and will end in March of 2024 on Monday March 11th applicants will know if they matched or not but they will not know where they matched which what happens on Friday of that week so at 10 a.m. Eastern time on Monday of March 11 you will know if you matched or not if you matched you will not be eligible to participate in soap if you did not match or you partially matched, you'll be eligible to participate in SOAP. An example of partial match if, for example, you match into prelim general surgery, which is one year of general surgery rather than the five years, or if you match into prelim medicine, or in the case of radiology where you do a prelim year and three years of radiology, you match in one or the other. You don't match in the years of training required to finish a full residency, only portion of it only partially that's why it's called partial match so again if you did not match or you partially matched you can participate in soap when does soap start it starts at 11 a.m the same day i know it's very harsh it's very rough to take the news of not matching at 10 a.m and by 11 a.m you have to be ready to start the soap literally an hour after what will happen at 11 a.m you will be able to see the programs that are participating in soap and these programs are the programs that also did not fill all their spots because if they filled all their spots, they can participate in the SOAP. So let's say a program, internal medicine program has 50 spots and they were able to fill 48 through the regular match. They might participate through the SOAP to fill these two spots they have. However, it's not mandatory for programs to participate in SOAP. So if they have two spots unfilled, they can choose either to keep them unfilled or fill them through other ways or participate in SOAP. So at 11 a.m. you'll be able to see the list of programs that are participating in SOAP, which means they have still empty spots. And I'll show you in a few minutes how that looks on your application. So you can start reviewing these programs starting 11 a.m. on Monday of match week and you can start applying to programs. You only have a limit of 45 programs across all specialties across prelim transitional year categorical spot let's say you're applying to both internal medicine and pediatrics and anesthesiology you only have a total of 45 programs to apply through the soap so you have to pick these programs very carefully and if you need an advisor to help you select these programs we have a list of phenomenal advisors who can help you with that and you can schedule this consultation session uh, by clicking on the link in the description below now let's talk about when do programs start reviewing your application? So let's say you start looking at the programs at 11.30 a.m. You picked 45 programs by noon or by 9 p.m. on that day. You submitted your application to these 45 programs. When do programs start seeing your application the next day? So on Tuesday at 8 a.m., programs can start reviewing your applications. If you submit your application at 11 a.m. on Monday or at 2 p.m. or at 9 p.m., it doesn't matter. They will only start reviewing your application at 8 a.m. and they won't know what time you submitted your application as long as you submitted before 8 a.m. on Tuesday. As I said, the SOAP process is very stressful because you literally knew that you did not match after all the hard work you put in and now you have to start applying an hour later and possibly start interviewing this next day. So once programs start reviewing your application or other people's application by 8 a.m. on Tuesday, they have Tuesday and Wednesday so March 12th and March 13th to interview you how does this interview happen it varies some programs might send you a zoom invite to interview you some programs might call you some programs might email you so the process varies significantly by programs so this is much less formal than the regular match process because of the time limit here they only have two days to evaluate all the uh, applications they got and you also have to be very very careful in your availability you have to be responding to your email immediately you have to have your phone on very high volume ringtone so you can hear it if you're in a different country
country you might be sleeping by the time programs review your application so if it's noon or 2 p.m in eastern time or pacific time it might, you might be sleeping if you're in china or india so you have to be very careful about that because if they call you and you don't respond you might lose the chance of interviewing with that program so just make sure you're available in the time zones of the programs you apply to so you don't miss a very valuable chance that might get you a residency spot so after programs review applications on the 12th and the 13th and they interview applicants the soap rounds start so on thursday at 9 a.m eastern time the first round starts these rounds are also different from the regular match process because here at 9 a.m you start receiving offers and what does that mean it means programs send you an offer of a residency spot so this is different than the regular match where you rank programs and programs rank applicants and then you match here they actually send you an offer so at 9 a.m you might receive 10 offers 20 offers 30 offers and then you have to accept or decline that offer and I'll show you also in a few minutes of how that looks like but you get all these offers between 9 and 11 and in that time period you have to either accept or reject the offer if by 11 a.m. let's say you got 30 uh, offers and you were sleeping and you did not accept one of them they will expire and that means all these offers will be considered as rejected so you only have two hours to accept an offer if you accepted an offer you won't participate participate in the rest of the rounds congratulations you matched but if you rejected all you, the offers that you got or you did not get any offer you go to soap round two and that starts at noon so after an hour from the end of soap round one you go to round two and that lasts also two hours from noon until 2 p.m eastern time you will also get offers and you decide either to accept them or reject them if you accept great congratulations you matched if you didn't get any or you rejected all the offers you got you go to round three by the way before we move on to round three you only can accept one offer so let's say you're applying to internal medicine categorical and you got 10 offers you can't accept two of them you only can accept one because this is similar to the match it's a binding agreement once you accept the offers that means you agree to match at that program the exception to that rule is if you are applying for specialties that have a prelim spot and an advanced spot like radiology for example let's assume you didn't match at neither a prelim nor a categorical spot and you accepted an offer for a prelim you can still keep going for the soap rounds to guarantee or secure the advanced position so for those who are looking for both a prelim and an advanced position they can go to take more than one offer in that case two offers so they can be fully matched but for applicants who are applying for specialties that don't have that situation you only can accept one offer around three of soap starts at 3 p.m and then ends at 5 p.m and it's the same you accept or reject an offer and if you don't get offers or you reject all your offers you go to soap round four which is from 6 p.m until 8 p.m eastern time and at 9 p.m that day on thursday march 14th soap ends few things to keep in mind one is that your chance of getting an offer is highest in round one and goes down with round two three and four so if you get let's say 10 offers be careful uh, rejecting all these offers hoping that you would get better options in round two and round three again each applicant is different some applicants might choose to go and matched uh, versus matching at certain programs because they think in the next cycle they might secure a better spot so that's why in this case i highly recommend you talk to an advisor and at our company the match guy we will be having a full team available to help you uh, with this process we know it's a very short timeline so we'll have advisors available to help you with this process on the same day if you need help uh, with your personal statement with your cv which we'll talk about uh, but mainly with the advising part of whether this makes sense to you if this is a good option for you uh, which at the end of the day will depend on your application realistic chances of matching and what are you hoping to make a difference in the next few months before you apply again in september if you choose to go and match this cycle another thing to keep in mind is the 45 programs you're applying to so you can start applying to these 45 programs on monday at 11 a.m and you can keep applying through march 12 march 13 you can even apply on march 14 between the soap rounds so during the soap 
round one, you cannot apply to programs. But between round one and round two, you can apply to programs because you can see after round one which programs are still unfilled and you can apply to these programs for so between 11 a.m and noon on march 14th you can see which programs still have spots and apply to them and the same applies here between 2 and 3 p.m so you can't apply to programs between noon and 2 p.m but you can apply to programs between 2 and 3 p.m however you have to understand the risk associated with that because not a lot of programs will have time to review an application in one hour and possibly interview you or talk to you over the phone so many of these programs that still have an unfilled spot through round two or round three might pick the applicants that they interviewed uh, in these two days on uh, Wednesday and Tuesday but they were lower on their rank list and send them invites in round two and round three so let's say a program uh, has only two spots uh, open or empty they still need to fill them and they interviewed 10 applicants on Tuesday and Wednesday they can only send two offers to two students on the round one they can't just send to so many applicants because if these two applicants took the spot the others will not be able to so that's why they can only send number of offers to what uh, empty spots they have so let's say these two applicants reject uh, the offer in that case they go to applicant number three on their list and number four in round two let's say both applicants rejected the offer they go to applicant number five and six both rejected they go to seven and eight so that's why many believe that programs will interview multiple applicants in these two days and then instead of looking at applications again in this one hour difference they just go down their list and they extend more offers but again exceptions happen there is no you know 100% rule but most recommend you apply to the majority of your 45 programs uh, before programs start reviewing your application which is on March 12 8 a.m. And finally, another very important point to keep in mind is that you should not contact programs outside the SOAP or the means that the program put on their website or their information. Programs can contact you based on your contact information. Make sure these are up to date, your email, your phone number, but you cannot contact programs unless they reach out to you. Now I want to show you how the platform looks like if you go unmatched and how you can navigate the programs. This is uh, this file is fully from the NRMP. It's available on their website and I'll the link for this file that is available on their website in the description of this video so after you log in it will show you either that you did not match at any position or you match at a one-year position as we said a transitional year or prelim or you match an advanced position but not a first year position so let's say you match in anesthesiology you match into the anesthesiology program but without matching in the first prelim or transitional year that is required as part of the uh, anesthesiology training so in that case you can participate in the match of this prelim spot and here if you match into a one year and you still need the advanced training you can soap for the advanced spot situation number two and three explains the partially matched this one is fully unmatched so if you go unmatched you go to the soap here in your account and you see unfilled programs once you click on that you'll find all the specialties the number of unfilled programs and the number of unfilled positions in each specialty once you click on the specialty you'll be able to see each program and how many spots they have available now I want to show you how does it look like when you get offers and how to accept to reject an offer again this file is fully provided by the match uh, in RMP website it's available on their website for free I'll leave the link for this file in the description of this video so once you start applying you would see these options here accepted offers pending offers rejected expired so when you get an offer it will be under the pending category this is just an example you'll see the name of the program and you can click on view offer once you click on the view offer it will show you the details of this program it will give you the option to accept the offer reject the offer or return once you accept the offer all your other pending offers will be rejected because you can only match at one uh, program if you're applying to categorical if you're doing prelim and advanced it's slightly different if you're doing categorical spot once you accept one offer out of so many you have pending the others will be rejected so that's why if before you accept an offer have a look at all the pending offers you have to make a decision of which program is going to be the best for you and it's saying here it's going to ask you for your password before you accept because it's again a binding com commitment you can't just say oh i changed my mind let me go somewhere else so make sure you're 100 sure about your decision before you click accept offer and remember you only have two hours to accept or reject an offer if you did not accept the offer or reject 
rejected by two hours, the time allowed in each soap round, the offer will expire, which means it will be rejected automatically and it will go under the expired. And by the way, to find these offers, you go to the soap, click on offers here. So to find the programs, you click on unfilled programs. To find the offers, you click on offers. And if you were unmatched after the SOAP rounds, you will get access to the list of programs that still have some empty spots even after the SOAP or the programs that did not participate in SOAP. And finally, match day, which is on Friday at noon Eastern time. That's the big day. If you participated in SOAP, you'd already know where you matched because you accepted the offer. But if you matched through the regular match, you only know that you matched on Monday. You won't know where you matched and that's the day where you know which specialty if you apply to multiple specialties and which program you'll be spending the next three or five or seven years of your life. And finally, two things I want to touch base on before I end this tutorial is the eligibility criteria. So to participate in SOAP, you must be registered for the NRMP. So this deadline already passed for this cycle, for this SOAP of MASH 2024. But for those watching this video for future cycles, make sure if you wanna participate in the SOAP, you have to participate in the NRMP. You also have to be eligible to enter graduate medical education on July 1st of 2024. That means you have to be ECFMG certified for international medical graduates. For US students, you have to satisfy the criteria criteria required by your medical school. And another criteria to participate in SOAP, as we discussed, you have to be unmatched or partially unmatched. If you matched fully in the program, you cannot participate in SOAP. You cannot see the list of programs participating in SOAP. Also, a few questions I get asked about related to ERAS and SOAP. So you use the same ERAS that you submitted through your regular application to participate in SOAP. So let's say you apply through the regular cycle in September, you submitted and certified your ERAS application. It's gonna be the same ERAS application you use for SOAP. You cannot change your ERAS other than the personal information. So you can change your uh, personal information but you cannot add experiences, you cannot change the description of the experiences, it's gonna be the same ERAS you applied for the regular match. If you have not certified and submitted your ERAS through the regular application, you have to submit it now so you can apply to programs. Make sure to keep your personal information updated, especially your contact information and NRMP ID. Letters of recommendation. So if you apply to a program, let's say you apply to a uh, University of Miami, for example, uh, through the regular match and you submitted four letters of recommendation and now University of Miami has few spots empty and you wanna apply through SOAP, the same LORs that you submitted before will be moved to SOAP. So you can't upload new LORs because you already applied to this program. You already used the LORs for this specific program. But let's say you apply to certain programs, but now other new programs have empty spots and you want to apply to them. You have the option of either using your existing LORs that you used for the regular match. So you don't have to resubmit the same exact LORs or you can use new LORs. So for programs that you have not submitted for LORs, you can submit new LORs. For the personal statement, it's the most flexible part of the application and you can change your personal statement even if you submitted a personal statement to the same program you applied to through the regular match. And by the way, if you need help editing your personal statement or you have not submitted your ERAS application yet and you need help with that, we have a team of experts physician advisors who edit these documents who have extensive experience with that and we will guarantee a fast turnaround because we know the urgency of the SOAP cycle. If you're interested in learning more about these services, you can either schedule a free consultation with our customer support team or reach out to us on WhatsApp. If you wanna sign up for these services, I'll leave the links for all our editing services for our advising services in the description below. The last question I wanna answer in this tutorial is what factors do program directors care about during the SOAP to invite applicants for interviews or give them offers? And the answer is it's the same factors that they use for the regular match. And you have to understand programs differ in the criteria they use for choosing applicants. But most of them look at step scores, look at your overall application, your experiences, uh, your personal statement, your letters of recommendation, and very, very importantly, your interview skills here. Given the fast pace of the SOAP, I feel interviews play a significant role in this 
deciding whether this person is worth investing this offer in versus not. And to be honest, the same applies for the regular match. Interviews still are extremely important for the regular match. And many program directors say once you get an interview, a lot of the decision of whether you're ranked high or not is the interview performance. So you'll see program directors differ in what they think is important and not. But I would say do your best in a great personal statement, have great LORs, uh, build a competitive application for this SOAP cycle or for the next cycle through great experiences, research, US clinical experiences. But in my opinion, the factor that you can change the most in this short time period is probably your interview skills. Because probably you don't have much time to change your LORs or your experiences. You know, even your ERAS is locked now if you submit it already. But the thing that you can change the most is your interview skills. And I have multiple blogs that talk about the interview process. Uh, we have a blog about 200 plus interview questions how to answer interview questions, what questions to ask at the end of the interview. And all these are available for free on our website, The Match Guy. And I'll leave the link for these blogs in the description below, in addition to multiple other YouTube videos that talk about interview preparation. But if you need help one-on-one -on -one with an expert interviewer who is a resident or a fellow in the US, who can guide you through this process. It's a one hour session. You can get as many hours as you like. Half of the hour is a mock session. So as if you were interviewing with a program director and the other half is feedback on your performance. So in this way, you really experience the interview process and you get feedback on your performance. And applicants who tried this service found significant value in it and they, their performance improved dramatically. And by the way, our interview preparation is 100% satisfaction guarantee, which means if you're not happy after the first hour, we give you your money back. And we have advisors from all specialties and uh, you can check the different advisors we have on our website and I'll leave the link for that as well in the description below. So that brings us to the end of this tutorial. I hope you hear the great news on Thursday that you got an offer accepted and you celebrate on Friday on match day. But I wanna tell you, even if it doesn't happen in soap there is still a chance i know applicants who did not match the regular match and next year they match at phenomenal programs but they didn't do that by just waiting they actually improved their application significantly they did some moves and that's what our advisors can help you with is identify what can you do to improve your chances next year again i wish you best of luck in soap i hope you match at your dream program if you find any value in this video i would really appreciate it if you can hit the like button subscribe to the channel and share share this video with your colleagues who are also applying for the soap to help them benefit from this tutorial. If you still have any questions about the soap, drop them in the comments below or reach out to us on our email info at thematchguy.com. Thank you everyone so much for watching and good luck on your match.